Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for a brand new project on my channel. I already wanted to do this for Farming Simulator 15, but I kind of missed the opportunity I would say. Now if you know my channel a bit, you know I'm totally into programming and creating stuff. So actually building a Farming Simulator 17 map together with you from scratch is gonna be totally awesome. We're gonna start with a flat surface, we're gonna create all the fields, coops and fences and everything ourselves. And in the process I might be able to teach you the one or other thing to do that yourself. You're going to need a couple of things to get yourself started. The first thing is of course the Giants Editor software. And for that you actually need to go on their website. And I can actually show you that just very briefly right here. This is the Giants homepage. You will have to register yourself, but it only takes a minute with a username and your email. That's all you have to put in. As soon as you have logged yourself in, you have access to the downloads and what you want is of course the newest version of the Chance Editor right there for your Windows version. And I also recommend you to actually download the modding ebook. This is so handy. It can just get very complex at certain points and it's nice to be able to reference the manual. Also, what you're going to need in order to follow these videos is an empty map. And I actually found one right here. Both of these websites, by the way, are going to be linked in the description. You don't necessarily need to start with an empty map. You can do this with any map and just modify them. But I'm more the kind of guy to do everything from scratch and build something myself. So with that out of the way, I actually created a folder called Farm Sim 17 Map. This can be anything you want. This is just my project folder. I'm going to open this up and you can see this is actually the download I just showed you. This is the empty map. What I want to do with this is to extract all actually. So here we have our extracted files. Beautiful. I'm also going to rename this into Nathan Farm Map 17. We do not necessarily need this file anymore, but I'm just gonna keep it for good measure. And we want to create actually another folder. I'm gonna call this exports. Basically what we need to do in order to populate our empty map is to export stuff from other maps and import it into Nathan farm map. Good, I think we're done with all the preparations. We should now be able to launch the Giants editor just like that. We will be greeted with a startup window. I'm not going to require this right off the bat. What we want to do is open an E3D file. Now the file we want to open is the file we just created from our farm sim 17 map. Then we're gonna go into the subfolder into the maps and open the map01.i3d. It will take a while to load probably, but there we go. We basically have a very flat map. Now for some reason the map is not completely empty, but we can easily accomplish this by just for instance clicking here in the scene graph. We can select all of the helper icons and we can just get rid of them if we wanted to. And we can also do the same thing with the placeholders. Now I'm not going to remove the trigger markers because those guys might actually be useful and we might just be able to use them in our scene eventually. But everything else I want to get rid of so we can start with a completely new and quite boring map. Now, as I said, we need to be able to load in stuff from other maps. This is the easiest way to populate this area. So why don't we go ahead and actually import an item? For that, we first have to export it from another map. So what I'm actually going to do is launch another Chines Editor instance. With this new instance, we're actually gonna load up the original map. So we want to open that and navigate to our games, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, Farming, Simulator 17, Data and Maps and we want to open up the map 01. There we go. So this is the, the familiar Goldcrest Valley map. And what we can do in here is just grab any object or group of objects and copy them over. Now let's do this with, for instance, uh, the pig farm. We want to copy a couple of objects from here. For instance, a fence item. By the way, you move through the map either by right pressing and then using the WASD keys. You can also use Alt and then use your mouse in order to zoom. This is a little bit smoother. You can look around by just pressing the right mouse button and uh, use your mouse. And these are the basic camera movements, so we can navigate around a little bit better. Now, what I want to do is actually click one of these fences, and you can see this is the pick fence 6 meter. 
Now we want to create our own shape for the pig farm. So what we're gonna do is just copy this fence and create something of our own. Now that we have the fence selected, what we can do is click file and then export selection with files. So also the textures and stuff get exported. Now, of course, we want to save this on our desktop farm sim 17 map and I want to use my export folder for this. And we actually have to use a name. So this was the pig fence six meters if i'm not mistaken and we save that do you want to get the parent directory structure i think we have to click yes here so now that we have exported this file what we can do is go back into our empty map and then simply click this icon import i3d file and as you can see, it's already in our exports folder for some reason. I'm not sure. Maybe that was because I tested something before. But if you're not here, just navigate there and choose the pig fence six meters. There we go. Now, it should be in the game, as you can see right there. We have no idea. Well, it is actually over there. It's quite far away. But what you can do is hit the F key in order to focus on it. And here it is, totally up in the air. What we want to do is actually use the attributes window right here in order to translate to 0, 0 and 0. This will also allow us to know where the actual center of the map is. Great, so I don't necessarily want the pig fence right here. What I actually want is the player spawner icon there. So what we can do is choose the career start point and we're gonna translate that to 0, 0, 0. There we go, that's where I want to start my career. And yeah, maybe over here we're gonna have our pig farm or whatever. One more thing I forgot is you can actually also pan using the alt button and then the middle mouse button in order to pan. Now, another cool functionality is that you can actually move objects and copy them right off the bat. You can clone them, rather. When you have something selected, use Ctrl and B, and then you can actually drag it across the surface very easily. And just by hitting the Shift key, you can make an instance copy of it. So I could just hang these fences together. There we go. And they should add up beautifully. If you're doing this with, for instance, let's say trees, you want to have some randomness to them. So let's do this again. We're gonna hit Ctrl B in order to get into this mode, but this time we copy it with Ctrl and this will actually rotate it in a random direction. And this is actually useful to place trees, bushes, etc. to make it look a little bit more natural. Anyways, uh, let's actually undo this a couple of times until we have our normal fences. Now, considering there might be a lot of objects just for the fences and all the additions, maybe a little canister or so, it might be useful to make groups out of those guys. Now, this doesn't feel very intuitive in my opinion. You cannot just, you know, click and drag or right click and choose an option here. What you actually have to do is select those guys and then go to create and then transform group. There we go. That's basically a group. Well, I just see we didn't need to select them. We just created the transform group and I'm going to call this, for instance, the pig farm group. Now, what we can do is select all of these guys and then hit Ctrl X and Ctrl V. This is the only way you can actually navigate stuff around here. Well, you can actually move up or move down, but you cannot group objects in other objects. So we could go even further. Uh, selecting this guy, I might be able to create another transform group. No, it went just right there. But this could be, for instance, the fence, right? And then we would select those guys and paste them in the fence. We would select the fence and paste them within the pig farm. And there we go. Here we have our structure and everything becomes much more overviewable. Alright guys, with those basics out of the way, let's cover some other basics, namely terrain editing and terrain painting. Now this is where it becomes slightly more complex, but bear with me, we can totally do this. Let's select the terrain sculpt mode right there, but we actually also have to click window and open up the terrain editing stuff. I've already closed all of these registers, what we actually want to have a look at first is the brush, so let's open that up. Since we have this icon selected, we already have the brush. We can make it bigger or smaller using the mouse button. We can also decide whether or not it's round. It also can be square, as you can see. I'm not going to go into too much detail for all the values. I'm just going to do the ones that I find important. And whenever we use something, I'm also going to explain it. So this is really a let's make a map. This first video should just, you know, explain you the details a little bit so you could tag along if you wanted. 
Anyways, uh, we are gonna start with a round brush and you can see the left mouse button is dedicated to add. So whenever I hit or press the left mouse button, the terrain will raise and when I move slightly, it will also raise again. So it's really like a, a brush. Now the right mouse button at the moment is dedicated to subtract, so that's what it's actually going to do. And the middle mouse button is just smoothing out the terrain. So you could for instance create a couple of uh, steep hills and then just smooth them out like this by just going over them slightly. And of course if you change the hardness of the brush etc then you will have less effects and can do a little bit more detail work if you wish to do so. Now at the moment the map is created in a way so this is the lowest you can go. We cannot go into the minus y directions. Now there are more complex modes such as the replace mode where you could for instance decide I want the terrain to be at this level and then you use the replace mode in order to bring all the other terrain up to exactly this level. But we are probably not gonna use it, our map is mostly gonna be flat for all of the technical and functional stuff and then in between everything we're gonna add mountains and just stuff that would otherwise disturb us. But I want the working areas to be as flat as possible, so working on this map is gonna be a delight. So yeah, with that feature you can actually do quite a few, I mean you get this brush really really big. For instance we do that and then we can create a mountain or a hill just like that oh my gosh my fence is disappearing but you get the basic gist of it we will probably get into more detail with that in the future now let's have a look at the terrain detail texture paint mode for that i want to have a proper look at my terrain and i want to open up the texture layer painting register right there or the tab or however you guys call that Selecting the tool up here will also give us a brush and of course we can use the brush things here as well in order to influence the value. So this is very important. These categories kind of work together. However, with the texture we can now choose what we want to paint. So at the moment it's set to rough dirt. So if I use the left mouse button it's gonna paint rough dirt. We can choose any of these things, even uh, concrete. So this is gonna be great to make a couple of parking spaces, etc. We can even do forest ground, oh yeah. And then add a couple of trees. So this is gonna be nice for decorative stuff. And of course we can go back to grass, should we wish to do so. So these are just basically the basics. Now let's actually paint a little bit with rough dirt. So let's imagine right here we would want to plant a field. And of course I might want to do this with a square brush so we can be very precise as how large we want to make the field. Now one more thing to note is that when you click this brush tool you can see these squares. Within these squares you can only have a maximum of four different textures. So you have to kind of plan your areas out in a way so that you you don't use more than that. Anyways, now let's have a look at the next tool that I want to show you, which is the terrain foliage paint mode. For that we're gonna go a little bit closer again and also we're gonna use a different tab here. Let's actually check this out, the foliage layer painting. Now this is where it becomes a little bit more complicated and where the manual might be very useful. You have a lot of uh, foliage channels and you have to remember what each channel does. Anyways, for the beginning, we want to actually choose Terrain Detail. This is the main category that will allow us to create fields in their various states. The texture layer, we're gonna use rough dirt, so it's gonna paint wherever rough dirt is. So I don't have to be precise right now. Since we have defined the field, it's just gonna paint there. So let's select this tool right here. It's also gonna give us a brush again. Maybe we change the brush to a round one again, just for shicks and giggles. Currently, channel zero is activated. Channel zero means cultivated. So if I paint this, then we have a cultivated field, just like that. Channel number one means plowed. So as you can see, we have a plowed field right there. Now, you shouldn't use these modes together. Actually, 0 to 3 should only be selected in a single instance. So if you select 1 and 2 together, you might end up with errors. Anyways, the channel 2 is actually seeded or planted land. And then the third channel is planted land, but for potatoes, basically. And I'm not exactly sure what that means, because it basically looks like rough dirt. 
So now let me explain you channel 4 through 6. These are the channels that are also used. 4 means basically uh, sprayed or fertilized, while 5 means rotate in a 45 degrees clockwise angle, 6 means 90 degrees, and if you choose 5 plus 6, it means 45 degrees counterclockwise. So just as an example, let's actually do a plowed field right there. I'm just gonna put this right here. If we want, we can have this fertilized, actually. This looks a little bit silly in the editor, but I think in the normal game it will be alright. But it's basically fertilized now, or we can remove this again, so it's not fertilized. We can choose number 5 in order to rotate it 45 degrees. We can choose 5 plus 6 in order to rotate it into the other direction 45 degrees. Or we choose just number 6 to do 90 degrees like that. So you have all the freedom that you want. Now it is actually also possible to paint crops on it, for instance, in uh, certain growth stages. But that's not necessarily something I want to do right off the bat. We will get to that probably in future episodes. Now it actually really depends on what you guys think about the series. Do you want to continue with that? Do you want to build a great farm and then potentially play a little bit on it? If so, let me know down in the comment section, that would be great. I think I'm gonna wrap up this episode right here. This feels like a good wrapping up point and the next time with all the basics out of the way, we can get right into building actual stuff. The first things we want to build is a parking space for us where the career starts. We want to potentially add a couple of vehicles. We might want to add parking spaces that are visually marked. I would say we go for a couple of houses and storage places. We uh, definitely need a silo for instance and we also need a couple of fields to get ourselves started. Anyways guys, there's one more thing we should do before we actually end this episode and that is to go ahead and have a look into the game. Now in order to accomplish that of course we want to save our file right here. But do not save your other file, so the file with the original map in it. Don't save that. You might break the map, you know. Anyways, we have a look back into our Farm Sim 17 maps folder, the one that is on my desktop. And in here I have my actual map with all of the files. So this should be working out as soon as I actually put it into a zip file. So we're gonna do that. It should be a .zip file. So put that into there. Thank you very much. And now that we have it here, we want to open up our mods folder. Now I already have an awful lot of mods in here, just ignore those. But the mods folder is in uh, your documents, my games, farming simulator 2017 mods. And we simply want to put this over there, our Nathan farm 17. There we go. Now let's open up the game. Alright guys, here we are in the actual game. If we click the career mode, we should be able to choose a new map, maybe easy mode. And you can see there are already three dots here. So that means we can switch to our sample mod map right here. And I guess that's something we still have to change within the folder structure. You know, we have to add our own image and our own text, change it here. But let's just continue and check out the map. Is it really what we have so far? Start. And a yes, baby, look at that. Oh, what is actually over there? There is a car. I totally didn't see that car. However, where the heck is the fence? So theoretically, the fence should be here. Yeah, look at that. It is actually right there, but it is not textured. So that is because we haven't dragged over the texture into the actual folder. Another thing that of course isn't right is the map. We will have to create probably our own image for the map. So that is going to be kind of complicated. But I'm definitely up for it. Ah, so unfortunately the fence is still invisible. So just dragging over the textures into the main texture folder wasn't the way to go. But I'm sure I will figure that out in the beginning of the next episode. The basic concept was to introduce you to the program and give you the overview. So in the next episode we can actually start building the real stuff. So I will actually remove everything once again and then I will spend a lot of time in Goldcrest Valley in order to accumulate objects that I want to implement here. And the next time we're gonna go big in building. So with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.